Thelma Medine's famous dresses are created by a highly skilled army of seamstresses at a small factory near Liverpool's city centre. But in recent years, the incredible popularity of her designs has put a strain on Thelma's time, her staff and her space. This is it. This is the factory. This is where it all happens, where we all work really hard. Is the office in here, which should be an office, but has now been taken over by girls having to work in here because there's no room down there. This is, should be the corset room, but at the moment there's four girls working in here. And this is the big room here where everything goes on. This is where we actually try the dresses on. We have the cutting table there. And this is where I sleep on here when we're busy. This is my bed. Here's my little quilt. That's where I sleep. Don't believe I sleep here? There you go. Toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant. Thelma's current close-knit team have spent years honing their craft. Each piece for each section. Just overlap it and overlap and sew bit by hand. But now they are struggling to cope with demand. I would say definitely our business now has gone up about 400%. And it's either we sit on it and keep it the way it is and don't take any more orders, or we grow with it. The expansion of the business will involve a move to new premises and gives Thelma the perfect opportunity to pursue her passion project. 80% of our business is for travellers, so I think the way to go is if we take on travellers. They put me where I am today, and it would be nice to just give a little bit back. Try fuck off, you backward poon yeah. <laughs> In two and a half months' time, Thelma is planning an interview day to find ten traveller trainees. <laughs> she needs girls over the age of 16 who live within 40 miles of Liverpool. Look at the camera, say hello. But the project is daunting. To the average business, a traveller girl is unemployable. <laughs> You're probably bastard. By the age of 11, the vast majority of girls drop out of school, and the idea of a career woman is an alien concept. Girls just clean up all their mind children. That's about it. Life consists of domestic chores and childcare. The feminist revolution happened to other people. I run dry masteries every day, every hour, every minute. I don't think it's fair. But after years of working with the community, Thelma has come to realise that not every traveller girl wants to be married at 16. Marriage is nothing to rush into. I'm still only young. I've still got my full life ahead of me to get married yet. Some girls want to work, but with opportunities few and far between, Thelma has decided to start a course that will give such women a chance. The challenge now is to find them. Yesterday, I put a message onto um, Facebook to just see if there's any girls out there that want to do uh, a training course. And the response has been absolutely amazing. You know, there's loads of replies and everything. I got like a little chill in my stomach. I thought, this is brilliant, you know. For these kids who've left school, you know, 40 and 15, there's no way in for them, is there? You know, they're never ever gonna be offered a job by anybody, are they? You know, because they're not, they're not educated enough, you know, they are noted for being unreliable. Obviously, they travel, so they think they're not going to come in. So hopefully with this, you know, we could educate other people about them and say, well, if they've been good here and they've turned up every day and they've done the whole course and they get a certificate at the end of it, well, it shows they're reliable, doesn't it? One of the first hopefuls to respond to Thelma's Facebook page is 16-year-old Irish traveller Roseanne. Look, look, look. Like many travellers, she spent her childhood moving from place to place in a caravan with her two brothers and two sisters. It was a lifestyle that significantly cut short her education. No, she wanted to give it a kiss. When did you leave school, Rosanne? At 12. Why did you leave school at 12? Travelling around places, like just keep going, 
town to town and then some people up for all the different schools. What can we do about the noise of the snoring? <laughs> no, put her over there, put her in the chair. Tom. I'll fix back in. Back in, back in. Back in. Back in. Tell me about your day. My day is get up, wash myself, fix all, clean up all upstairs, come down, feed her, feed all the children, then just go downstairs, clean all downstairs, sit down, yes. watch tellies, get back up, wash up, clean up. Thelma's dressmaking course represents a unique opportunity for traveller girls. But it's a love of fashion that has persuaded Roseanne to apply. Oh, that'd be lovely for a wedding, wouldn't it? No. no. Not for a wedding, no. Because no. it's, it's too plain. I don't. It's like a Lady Gaga style, isn't it? Do you like Lady Gaga? No. I know for, for, for a genuine fact, Lady Gaga, she's definitely a devil worshipper. Like, she, she sings songs about devil, uh, Judas and all that there. Um, I love Judas. It's a devil song. And Rihanna, her, no, they're on, um, under my umbrella. Wind up backwards, she's talking in tongues to the devil. Thelma is offering real paid jobs for at least six months and hopes that many of the girls will be good enough to stay on and work in the factory afterwards. But by teaching them an invaluable skill, she wants to change their lives forever. They brought up to say, you're going to be homemakers and that's it. I just want to give them, you know, a new lease of life, basically, to go and get a job or just make them feel better about themselves. You know, that they don't have to depend on a man. You know, they don't have to get married because that man's going to give you money for your clothes or money, whatever. They can just get up and go make their own money. Instead of when you come in to me and you want an outfit, I have to go and ask him. Oh, I'll go and see if, you, if I can have it. Just go in and buy your own. Larissa, just uh, come down, love. I just wanna... For the new trainees, life in the factory will be a huge culture shock. But Thelma now needs to break the news to her current staff, whose working lives will also be turned upside down. Just going to let, let you know what's going on. We're going to be moving premises, right? So Yay! it's going to be a load of disruption, right? It's going to be a lot bigger, because we're going to take on another 10 girls, right? That's the good part. The bad part is they're all going to be travellers. That's not bad. Don't well, <laughs> you know, you come back to me and say that in three months when they've been here. They're going to be there on a six-month scheme. At the end of it, so they can go and get a job. So does anyone see any problems with that? Why travellers? Why travellers? Because <laughs> no one ever gives them a chance to do anything. As soon as they see the travellers, then they don't get an opportunity to do anything. You're going to show them the ropes. <laughs> yeah? There's going to be a competition with the fake tan who can come in the orange just on a Monday. <laughs> I can't believe you said that. I know. <laughs> I'm saying it's Vicky and it's true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. These girls have probably never even threaded a needle. By the time they leave here, they're going to have to be able to use an ordinary a flat machine, an overlocker, a fish wire machine, a hook machine and finish off everything as well. But if they do turn up every day, they will be able to walk out of here and get a job. Maybe not with their attitude, but... Despite her good intentions, not everybody thinks Thelma's project is such a great idea. Daughter and PA, Tracy, is well used to her mum's ambitious plans. She gets so excited about things and says, yeah, we can do this and we can do that, and then, you know, but when it comes down to it, she doesn't realise sometimes how much work is involved. I try and tell her all the time, my mum, isn't this too much? Or, but she doesn't listen anyway. She doesn't listen to me. We're really busy as it is. Teaching another 10 girls what to do now. So I'm travellers. Um, it's going to be hard. <laughs> I'm dreading it to be honest, but yeah. What's the worst thing that can happen? A fight. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly half of Thelma's current staff were born outside the UK. For gypsy girls from a notoriously insular community, mixing with foreigners will be a new experience. They most definitely, most definitely, um, like, look down on the people who don't talk English, right? Even the kids will go in 
and say like, to Stacey or whatever, they've gone in and go, why can't you tour properly? Even though they go, oh, everyone's racist against us, they don't, you know, if you're not, if you're not white and you're not, uh, you don't speak English like properly, then they are very racist against you. How do you feel about this? Uh, actually, I'm scared a little bit about driverless girls who are going to start to work here. It's a month until Thelma's interview day, and preparations for the influx of travellers are continuing at a pace. The Facebook site has been inundated with interest. I'd love to train with you. I'm 41, live in Liverpool. And over 200 inquiries have already been posted. Hey, let's let's employ Martin. Yeah, I like the look of Martin. We'll have him. Doesn't matter what he can do. Let, let's bring him. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thelma has been following up some of the most promising candidates in person. You okay? Hey, Jane's just falling down. I <laughs> got the hat. This is like an opportunity of a lifetime you get near. And to house both the expanding business and the new trainees, a new factory needs to be found with nearly five times the capacity of the old workshop. Can this set up a cannabis farm in? Go away! What cannabis farm? <laughs> oh my God, I'll take this place. <laughs> <laughs> Despite the scale of the changes, many of Thelma's nearest and dearest are still not on board. Her daughter and PA Tracy included. I think um, I think you just took more than enough on as it is, to be honest with you. I know that, but I can't just... If I didn't do it, then I'd feel worse than if I did do it. That's I what know. I'm saying. <laughs> like... <laughs> Why? I think you just got yourself in the, you know, in a nice way you, where you need to be, and then you've got to push it again. How can we train girls? What you're going to say now, though, is don't train the girls, isn't it? Yeah. Don't start it. Is yeah. that what you, where you come from? Yeah. You're already here till about six o'clock in the morning, some nights. So I'm thinking, well, you're going to be even worse. Honestly. Listen to me. No, no, I am listening to you. I'm taking on board what you're saying, but I'm just going to go and see another premises <laughs> in a minute. Sorry. Oh, no, I am. I am listening to you. It's just that I think it'll work out for everyone. You know, you're going to do it anyway, so it's pointless even talking about it. It's already in your head. She can't understand me putting my life, which is comfortable now, on the line for something that, you know, is not going to make me any more money. It's just going to... I'm just going to put what I've made into helping these girls, and that's what she's worried about, that I am going to be left, or I could lose everything I've got, which is my worry, but I'd never tell her that. I'm not going to tell her that I think about that. In contrast to her new potential employees, Thelma lives in a luxurious five-bedroom house on the outskirts of Liverpool, with her partner Dave and seven-year-old Katrina. What's this then? This is my, your house? This is my house. This is your house? I'm going to show you around. And I'm going to show you around. Right, it's OK. Right, what's this bit? The lounge. The lounge. Big and blingy. Look, and look at this. This is real gypsy, isn't it? I like everything they like. Oh, whose room's this one, Katrina? My dad's. We don't come in here, do we? No. Why? Because what does he do in here? Just watches football all day. This is our swimming pool, isn't it, babe? Yeah. Yeah? I used to have more than this, actually. I used to have um, a big house with loads of land and horses and everything. And um, got divorced and lost it all. In 1994, Thelma found herself single and penniless. What gave me the strength to walk away from an unhappy marriage was that I could earn money. My aunt was a tailoress and my mum um, was a seamstress and they passed it on to me. Thelma began by selling dresses on a market stall and before long found her niche. Once upon a time, this little girl came to, the, to my store and she said to me, can you make dresses like Gone With The Wind dresses? Do you know what they are? Mm, I don't get that. Don't you get that? No. What they are is big, sticking out dresses like that. So I said, OK, I'll do them. That was the first gypsy 
that ever came to speak to me. Should have just said no. The business was beginning to do well, but with two young children to feed, Thelma also continued to claim benefits. I had to sign on uh, for income support uh, to support the kids, which I'd never, ever done before in my life. And I should have stopped signing, but I didn't because I was scared. I'd never had to look after them on my own before, and I carried on. And I ended up um, uh, going to prison. I had a custodial sentence for it. I was put in a, um, the van, taken to the prison, and I basically, I couldn't have felt any worse at that time. I can't even imagine, I can't, I can't even tell you how it felt. It's just, it's probably the worst feeling in the world. And it's always motivating me, like, I will never be in that position again. It's frightening. I would never do it, ever. So that's what gave me the motivation to, to work as hard as I do now. Sammy Joe, it's Thelma from Nico. Um, I'm ringing you about this, you know, the uh, trainee uh, thing, what we're doing. You're still interested? It's something you have to have at the end of it as well. Do you know what I mean? So you, you, I don't think you, your dad being in prison or your brother being in prison is going to matter, really. All right. Bye, bye-bye. She's really off for it. She really wants to do it. But I think her dad's just got seven years and her brother's just got two and a half years. So, well, she doesn't have to ask her dad's permission now, does she? It's just a mum. But the more I look at it, the more I see it's going to be a hard slog. It's going to be a hard slog to get them here. It's going to be a hard slog to keep them here. And an even harder slog to make them do for six months. But, as I say, if we have one left at the end and it changes their life, then I'll be happy with that. Hiya, Shannon. It's about the, you know, the training course. Yeah. The, how old are you, babe? I'm 16. You're 16? Yeah. OK. Who'd who, who you belong to? Me. Yeah. Sweepy and oh, are you Sweepy's? Oh, it's you. Oh, how are you, babe? How are you? Oh, God, I didn't know it was you. Bye-bye. The first dresses I ever did with diamonds on for babies was for her, for Shannon. And her little sister, Shamelia. Yeah. First time I ever put diamonds on a dress was was for that kid. And she's what, sixteen now? Jesus, that makes me feel old. Irish traveller Shannon lives forty miles from Liverpool. In the Welsh town of Wrexham. <laughs> Go away, Moiley, fuck off. Having left school at the age of eleven, her life is spent caring for her five siblings. Marianne, Miami, you can't get on this, Marianne, Miami. Move, move, Marianne. But having decided to attend the recruitment day, Shannon is now hoping she'll get the chance to learn the art of dressmaking. What are you most excited about? In this course, it's just working with fellow men, getting to make their dresses and meeting other people, like not only your community, meeting Velma's community as well. And because there's not a lot of people out there like Velma that are trust as you. Thelma's probably the only one that would trust you. I think it's very good with Thelma too, do you know? Nervous, but excited as well. This will be the first time like, I've done anything like this. And I'd like to go and just get down, put my head down and do it. Get on and get a job at the end of it. But I'll have to take one day a week off because it's all going to have innovation. So I'll have to probably take every Tuesday or something off to go to that. And what is that? Community service. Why have you got community service? What? Why have you got community service? Arguing in the town. It was just a tone of gratitude. Ah, oh, you gypsy and you pike, you this, that and the other, which was very, very aggravating. She wouldn't like fighting fight her and said to her, oh, go on, you country girl, you council house girl. She wouldn't like that there, she'd get upset. I'm sorry. Mum said just give me leggings with her. No, she didn't. You ugly bastard. Sorry about that. After an extensive hunt, Thelma eventually leased out a large space just behind Nico's. It's nearly five times as big as the old premises and five times as expensive. 
but having persuaded her partner to take on the building work, Dave now has just three weeks to transform the empty shell into a fully functioning workshop. Uh, got the keys yesterday, and it's uh, all hands on deck now, isn't it? So, Tamara hasn't seen it yet. Do you know how she's feeling? Oh, she's terrified. She's nervous. I mean, there's a lot of expenditure she's gone into this, and she just doesn't want it to fail. Yeah, you've been together 18 years. Yeah. And we're still not married. We were going to get married about 10 years ago. And, um, I think she went to prison. <laughs> so, uh, that's good for that one. So, um, I think we've put it off for a bit. One day we'll get married, probably. I, mean, I don't know who's going to do the dress for her, though. <laughs> Hiya. Nice. It's bigger nice. than what I can remember. No. Hi, Jamie. Yeah. yeah. It really is scary because I haven't been in this, and I always said I'd never get in this position again where you're going to use all your savings, all, all the money I've made over the years, I'm going to have to plough back into this now. If this doesn't work, then I'm penniless, basically. No matter what I do, I've got to make it work somehow. It's a week until Thelma's interview day, and under the guidance of Dave, work is well underway at the new workshop. But while Thelma has been focusing on recruiting her trainees, the overall cost of the project has snowballed. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah. well, that's out there. Hello. Weather. Hello. Oh, that's... oh, right. So, you. Hmm. What? What do you want to talk to me about? Oh, no, I've had to call you down over this. All the uh, stuff getting done on the uh, factory. What? Bad news, are you told well, me? Yeah, it's just spiraling. Don't give me no more bad news. <laughs> it's spiraling now, the, um, the, the price and everything. Is it? Yeah. You haven't got a clue, have you? How much do you think I've spent up to now? Um, Honestly. 10,000. Yeah, well, I tell you what, why don't your times it by five? No. Yeah. You know, you're up to 50. And there's still other stuff to do. Really? Yeah. 50? Yeah. Near enough. I haven't got 50. Yeah. Can I tell you how much I had down for starting up the premises? Go on. Um, 2,500. For such an educated woman, you have some lapses. Um, well, what can I say? You know, I've gone, I've gone too far now. I've... <laughs> I've spent everything I've got. Yeah. Right, I've spent every single penny I've got. What I've put away over the last couple of years, and I'm down to virtually nothing now. Nice. Uh... Is that how much it is, though, yeah? Yeah. Despite the spiralling cost of the project, Dave pushes on with the building work. And Thelma is increasingly having to juggle the day-to-day -day running of her business. What do you think? I love it. Is it like what you thought? Yeah. Mm. With visits to see the most promising candidates in person, hoping to encourage them to attend the upcoming recruitment day. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Ooh. Today, accompanied by her longest-serving employee, Pauline, She's come to see 17-year-old Irish traveller Margaret, who lives just minutes away on a site in central Liverpool. Oh. No! <laughs> Hello. Hi, you love. Hello. You look lovely. You look Hi, really, yeah. really nice. What we want to know is that you're passionate about doing it. Yeah, then. Yeah. It really, it stops me from sitting around at home, exactly. really, in it? Yeah. And there's nothing to do inside. No. So I might as well get my chance while I can. Yeah. Really nothing to do, it's only straight road and I'm sick of st sitting in the site and really doing nothing, so yeah. I want to try and get out there and make the most of it, innit? Yeah. 
I'm not really bothered what anyone else have to say about it. I, I'm the one that's like... You're the rebel. Yeah. Are you the rebel? Yeah. People say to you, oh, why, why do you want to go on that? You don't really care what people say about you, really. But it'd be nice for your little sister, who's like nine, mm. who's seen you going to work every day, doing something every day, to yeah. have an airhead. And she's always got her own money and she's doing this. I'd like to do that. Yeah. Just, you know, it, it takes someone to change it. Yeah. Definitely. Right, OK, then. All right, then. See you later. See you, honey. Bye. Bye. It's the kids like that that we spoke to over the years who've got that passion to break away, to do something completely different that's probably inspired us to do this yeah. because, you know, you'll get them come along now and again and, you know, they're restricted, they can't do things, but with her, she shows you so much passion. She, she really does want to do it. But she said it herself, she's a little rebel, yeah. isn't she? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, she's the type of girl what I want. She's the type of girl that I think would make something of it. The list of potential trainees is slowly but surely growing. And after a month of hard labour, Thelma is finally ready to move into her new workshop. It comes apart, that, you know. See what I've got to work with. But having run £36,000 over budget, her once healthy coffers are rapidly running dry. <laughs> You're not going to sell that to anyone, are you? <laughs> it's just money that I've got to pay for machines now. How much is it? Um, it's, it's nearly £7,000 I've got to pay. I've paid some and that's the rest of it. That's it. Um, bank account empty. Gone. I really do not know what's going on at the moment. There's people walking in and out. They could be robbing me for all I know, but they're just walking in and out and taking stuff. So we've got people trying to order dresses who are right in the middle of it. We've got people outside the shop waiting to be seen. We've got Dave walking in and out with about 10 men. It's all a big mess. And I'm dying for a drink. Really am. The new workshop is five times bigger than the old premises. More than enough room to house the ten potential trainees. For Thelma and Pauline, it's a far cry from their early days together on a market stall. God. It's like a bit um, surreal, isn't it, don't you think? A bit weird. Looks good though, doesn't it? Yeah. You both seem very philosophical. If I knew what it meant, I'd to answer you. I was going to say that. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite exciting, but nervous as well, yeah. isn't it? I think everyone feels Do you realise this could be the biggest mistake of our lives? You know that, don't you? Mm. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. After months spent trying to generate interest in her project, Thelma's interview day has finally arrived. Today, she will select the ten gypsy girls who will join her business as trainees. There's one magpie. Katrina, we need to see another one. It's going to be a bad day. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on. Let's go, kid. Let's go. This guy coming here. You look up too long. Your mouth's too big. Stop it. You stop it. You. You stop it. You. <laughs> the interviews will take place in a dance studio above the new factory. Thelma's Facebook page eventually received hundreds of responses showing interest in the course. And the girls are preparing for a large turnout. How are you feeling, Tracy, today? <laughs> Nervous. Just um, waiting for Thelma. Um, just hoping that everyone turns up, you know. I feel dead nervous, but I think Thelma will be twice nervous than me. Yeah. This is off as a zombie. Pauline's daughter and head designer Leanne will oversee the day's creative tasks. 
，好吗<咳> ？Hello， 哎呀 ，You all right？ Yeah, yeah, we're just setting everything up now, but、um, I don't know how many people are here yet. Yeah, just go and check for just you know a quick head count. Let's see. Oh, ten. <laughs> is that is that all it is? Yeah. So um, don't know what we're gonna do here. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is typical. They'd probably all turn up tomorrow. Ooh, there's about ten. That's it. Oh Jesus! Why do I do this to myself? I did ask you that question, didn't I? Mum, don't, don't let it get you down. Off. Don't let it get you down. It is getting me down, though. You can only do what you can do. It's not your fault if I'm turned up. You've done everything you can. I know. I know that. that. I know that. It's not your money, is it? I know that. Thirty-six thousand pounds in debt to do this. It's still not worth getting upset for. You can, you know, you can only do what you can do, and that's it. Might, you know, there might be some more that might turn up late. I really, I, I really don't want to do this. I don't. It's really disheartened me. Definitely, I just don't want to do it. It's an hour after Thelma's interview day was due to start. As predicted, the potential new recruits have failed to turn up on time. But eventually, a mix of Irish travellers, English travellers, and Romani gypsies begin to arrive at the venue in numbers. For many, it's the first job interview they've ever attended. Why? Why are you here today? Why、what? do you want to do this? Because <laughs> I don't even know what they're doing. What are you doing in Portugal? No, it's like it's an experience for travelling girls, isn't it? You excited? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking very forward to it. To be quite honest. <laughs> It's been a slow start, but by 12 o'clock, 35 girls have turned up. Far lower than they'd hoped for, but enough to justify Thelma's faith in the project. Hi, girls. Hi. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Are everyone okay? Yeah. Fine. Thank you all for coming. You know, I'm glad so many of you made it here today. What we're going to do today is. Try and do something for you girls what no one has ever done for you before. Now I've worked with the travelling community for 15 years. Who's talking? <laughs> you know when my mouth's moving, that means you're shut. It's okay, right? Now I am committed fully to this, right? I have put every single penny what I've earned over the last 15 years into this project. What I want from you is to give me your commitment. I don't care if you can read, you can write, you can sew, anything, because I can teach you all the rest. I just want you to be committed in what you're doing. Thank you for being here. And now, Leanne and Yan Lee, Tracy, are going to take you through to that room, and we will see you later. To help give Thelma an idea of each girl's creative ability, they're put to task designing their dream dress. Under the guidance of head designer Leanne and specialist corset maker Yan Li. I saw you some design board. It's、uh, I made in college. Creative.、Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Whilst next door, Thelma and Pauline start interviewing the 35 hopefuls. What about dressmaking? Have you ever done any dressmaking? I've never done no dressmaking. No. Have you done、um, things like this, like blinging up your own outfits? Yeah.、And、I want to know how would how are you going to be committed to this? To be honest, I don't really know what commitment is. You don't know what committed. No. Right. What committed means? You mean? Right. It means that you've got to. 
show that you're willing, able, and put every effort you've got okay. into doing this. Yeah, something what I'd like to do. Day. Every single day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some people say, you know, in the travelling community, that it's shameful, <coughs> you know, for a young girl to work or whatever. I yeah. don't care what people say, it's just what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. And you'd obviously get on with Irish travellers. I as get well, on with everybody, on with, me. Yeah, everyone. Anybody can get on with me, I'm mad. <laughs> oh, yeah? Really? <laughs> just go over there, babe, while Pauline takes your photograph. Strike a pose. Right, so I'm just going to go through a few questions with you as quick as we can, because there's loads of you. What's your name, sweetheart? Lillian Lowther. Margaret Tui. How old are you, Vicky? 17. For 16 and 16. 16. What, what, what was the last day you went to school? How old were you? From my 12. When I last went to school, I was about 11. 15. 15. You do know that you're not going to be allowed out at lunchtime? No, time. definitely not. Definitely not. What do you feel about people who, who will say, it's shameful that you're working. I want to learn something. Hi, you girls. Hi. Thanks for waiting. What do you want to become in life? I don't know, really. Beauty and just mm -hmm. air and nails and things like that. I don't really know. My God, you've dressed to impress to here today, haven't you? Is this uh, what you've done? This is me little... Oh! First time I've ever done anything like this. That's good, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've tried my best to get a job. Have you? And you reckon being a traveller is what's put you on? Yeah, Wrexham is very, very prejudiced. Is there anyone out of your family or, you know, people off your site who think that you shouldn't be doing this? There's a few girls and boys saying, why are you doing it? Is it? And don't you feel ashamed? How old were you when you got married? I was an old bride, 22. Oh, you were an old bride, um, didn't you? <laughs> strike a pose, really smile. Next door, most of the girls have finished designing their perfect outfit. Margaret has envisaged a cat suit. Possibly leopard skin and pink. Um, as you can see, that's the tray on the back. That's supposed to be a bra top. That's the pants, like a circle. <laughs> Callie, will you shut the fuck up? Sorry, mate. Sorry, guy. Have you had any suit on? No. I don't want one. Why not? Because. I actually don't want to do nothing here. Just come here like, to have a look what's going on and all day around. I don't want to achieve nothing out of it. I'm not interested in jobs and all that carry on. Stay at home. What would you be doing staying at home? Cleaning, cooking, babysitting, washing up, cleaning again, washing the baby, <laughs> making food for the baby. You know, daily routine. By 3 p.m., the majority of the girls have finished their interviews. And with the dress designing task also complete, they're increasingly distracted. You've got to have that flair, and yeah. she's got it. You can see yeah. by what she's got on. She yeah. knows how things go together. How much longer is it going to be? Um, we're up to about 13, aren't we? But we've got to do them all. Why? Just run around like lunatics now. Who is? The kids. <laughs> the kids, the young ones, or, or, or the big girls? I don't, I don't know how old they are, Thalma. They're just running around. Crazy. Really? <laughs> what am I meant to do? Do you know what I mean? I can't shout at them. I'm not the mothers. An hour later, the interviews are complete. Thelma now has to choose the gypsy girls who will join her business as trainees. Having sunk everything into the project, it's crucial she selects the 10 who have the passion, creativity and commitment to make it through the course. Her work was good. I know. You put that, haven't you? Yeah. And I loved the way she put that outfit together. I did. I said that I, to her. I thought mm -hmm. it was brilliant. You know, she's got that thing yeah. about her. She's too young. Now, I know you're not going to... You're probably going to... You well disagree with it. She was a pain. But she loves so and she doesn't like design. She doesn't like she... manners either. <laughs> Well, that's maybe we can something we can knock into them. So Do you know what I mean? Stuff. Have a look at them and see if there's anyone who jumps out at you. What about, what about this girl? Um, they didn't they? seem to have a clue, though. It's just this final one. I don't know. <laughs> I love her. Do you? Yeah. She's really feisty. Mm -hmm. She reminds me of myself. I want to give her a smack, but she, I think she'd be good. I think she's trouble, but... Do you? Yeah. What do you think? Give it a go. You pooky snail bastard! Snail! Downstairs, Margaret's boyfriend has arrived. 
unannounced and apparently unwelcome. Them now. After much deliberation, Thelma is ready to announce her decision. The successful girls will spend the next six months learning the art of dressmaking. Those who aren't selected will return home to daily life. Um, right now, we've, this has probably been the hardest decision I have ever had to make in my whole life, and that's the truth, because I've been impressed with every single one of you. But, you know, I've got to get it down to 10, OK? Fair scale, uh, Bridges. <laughs> well done, Bridges. Margaret Tui. Better not let me down. Come on. <laughs> um, next girl, Veronica Lee. <laughs> well done, babe. Well done, Veronica. <laughs> Lillian <laughs> Lather. <laughs> Victoria. <laughs> Kathleen Berry. <laughs> Shannon. Samantha. <laughs> Roseanne Berry. <laughs> Grace. <laughs> These are the ten. So I've got to say to you, thank you so much for coming. And we were really impressed with all of you. So I think you all should give yourself a big round of applause because you've been brilliant. <laughs> With the ten trainees chosen, the girls depart with mixed emotions. We never got in. We never got in. Basically. Basically, yeah. I don't know why I'm thinking. I never thought I'd get picked in a million years, and then once you shouted my name, helped me out when I'm in my mouth, I was nervous. No cleaning, no mind children, not seeing your boyfriend in the morning times, so. It's just like, everything's going to change. Were you upset? No, it doesn't really bother us. We wasn't even that hyped up for going. It's just been fantastic. And I was really pleased with the girls that didn't get through. I was so happy for the one that did get through. And I thought we'd have tears and things like that, but we didn't. We've got a couple of quiet ones. We've got a couple that seem to know what it's all about. And we've got a couple of ones that we've got to watch. Yeah, and we've got to keep our eyes on them. <laughs> so, thought this was going to be the most difficult bit, picking the ones we wanted. But it couldn't have gone any better, actually. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thelma has her 10 traveller trainees, but now the real work begins. I'm going to tell you, everybody said this is going to fail. What I want to do is prove all them wrong. <gasps> Over the course of the next six months, the girls will attempt to learn the art of dressmaking from Thelma's staff. Thelma, no, no, no Margaret, I'm talking. That's what she's right, about. listen to me. And basic reading and writing from an academic tutor. H-I-J-K-L-M-P-Q-W. Can the travellers adapt to the demands of working life? One of the girls has got a personal hygiene problem. Or will the outside world prove too much for Thelma's gypsy girls? No, I'm going to kill us! Oh, God. Love you. Believe me, someone's getting sacked today. <laughs>